All right, well, now we come to the point in our service where we remember Jesus around his table. It's a time for Christians to remember the person of Jesus and who he is and what he did at the cross in their place. And in just a couple of minutes, we will be taking a small wafer and a bit of juice. Uh, these are symbols. These are symbols of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that was offered at the cross in place of all of those who put their trust in him. Today, we're going to be looking at a passage which shows us Christ's willingness to endure the cross and all of its torture and all of its torment for us. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn to Matthew chapter 27? We're going to be looking at verses 33 and 34 together. Uh, some men are coming down the aisles. If you don't have a Bible, just lift your hand and let them know that, and they would put a Bible in your hands. If you don't actually own a Bible, uh, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting here is at the crucifixion. Jesus has already been tried, and he's been found guilty. He's been found guilty of nothing that he did. Uh, he is dying a death that he did not deserve to die. He is an innocent man going to the cross, and he is at the crucifixion. We're going to be looking at a couple of things here, but specifically what I'd like you to do as we read our passage is notice Christ's willingness to endure the full wrath of God in all of its violence and all of its force. Starting with verse 33, I'm going to read through the end of verse 34. And as I do, pay particular, pay particular attention to the end of verse 34. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall. And after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. What we want to see here is exactly what's taking place in a Roman crucifixion. This was one of the most barbaric ways to put a person to death in the history of man. A man would hang on a cross and he would stay on that cross for hours. And the birds of the air would eventually peck at his eyes and his flesh. The pressure inside of his chest and his pericardial region would grow and it would become very difficult to breathe. He would enter into shock. It was an inhumane way to die. One small sense of humanity in this was that Romans would offer to those being crucified some small sedative which would appease some of the torture and some of the torment in the crucifixion. They offered that same thing to Jesus here. We see that in verse 34. But Jesus was unwilling to drink this. And the reason why Christ was unwilling to drink this was because he knew what his role was. His role was a substitute in God's system of justice. And Christ was not willing to drink anything, take anything that would impair his ability to contend with God's wrath against all of those for whom he was dying. He knew that he was required to experience everything as a true substitute that everyone that he was dying for would otherwise experience in a place called hell. And he was ready and he was willing to do that. He knew he could do that because he was indeed the son of God. So Christ went to the cross with no protection whatsoever. He went to the cross by himself. He went to the cross as man's representative before God, and he actually endured every bit of God's wrath so that all of those for whom he would die would be able to say that their confidence is in Christ and he has done for them what they could not do for themselves. So today, Christian, as the elements come to you, take them and hold them. And give thanks to your Father in heaven for sending his Son to suffer in your place and to fully contend with the full weight of God's wrath in your place. A task that would take you eternity, but it took Christ because he was the Son of God just a few hours on a cross outside of Jerusalem nearly 2,000 years ago. Thank God that his Son is indeed the Son of God and he was able to fully satisfy the Father's wrath against us. And when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here this morning and you're not a follower of Christ, we want you to know something. We want you to know that we're very, very thankful that you're here with us today. It is our privilege that you're here. But this is a time for Christians to remember Christ. It's a time for Christians to remember what Christ has done for them, the wrath that he suffered in their place. Um, because this is a time for Christians, when the elements come to you, just pass them to the person next to you. But use this time to consider what it is that Christ has done for all of those who would actually submit to his lordship in their life. After the service, we will have some 
men over here, some women over here to talk with you. They will answer questions that you might have about what it looks like to follow Christ. And they will have a Bible. They can open their Bible. They can show you from God's word that there is salvation and faith in Jesus Christ. So men come and serve us. And when you've received the elements and you've prepared your heart, take the elements on your own.